You're watching This Week in Space with Miles O'Brien. Hello and welcome to This Week in Space. My name is Miles O'Brien and I drive a truck. Now can I go to the Senate and insist our space program get a little more scratch so that we can scratch the surface of another world with human boots? Apparently not. And for those of you space lovers who like to read the tea leaves, the picture is not pretty at all. The first omen came from the president's political guru, David Axelrod, who told reporters when it comes to space, the president is going to speak to that through his budget, meaning no uplifting Obama oratory that aims us for the stars. Not good, according to Democratic senator and one-time shuttle payload specialist Bill Nelson. He says he's told the White House that's a mistake. I hope they are reconsidering that the president comes out and makes his own statement about what he plans for the future of NASA. All this talk is putting the D.C. rumor mill into warp drive. Space News reports this. Obama's 2011 budget request is no longer expected to include the $1 billion boost that has undergirded NASA's planning. Remember what the Augustine Commission told us over the summer. You can't get beyond low Earth orbit on a shoestring. The committee said NASA should get about $3 billion more a year. Houston, we could have a real problem here. And even though the Augustine Commission did not pick a vehicle or a destination, it was clear from reading the tea leaves in their report that the Augies liked the idea of entrepreneurs building rockets for trips to low Earth orbit. But another group of graybeards that noses around NASA, the Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel, this week lowered the boom on this notion. ASAP said anything other than the plan of record, specifically the Ares-1 rocket, would be no faster, no cheaper, and more importantly, less safe than the Falcon 9 rocket built by SpaceX. I caught up with the SpaceX CEO, Elon Musk, this week by Skype, and he was fuming over that report. Elon Musk, thanks for joining us on This Week in Space. Uh, the ASAP report was harshly critical of SpaceX, of Falcon, uh, of Dragon. I'd like to go through some of the passages with you and just have you respond to it, if you would. Uh, one of the things that struck me was this one. To abandon Ares-1, which is the, the, the program of record, if you will, is unwise and probably not cost-effective. The ability of any current COTS design to close the gap or even provide an equivalent degree of safety is speculative. Would you call it speculative? No, I'd say that's, that's not at all the case. Uh, our Falcon 9 vehicle and Dragon spacecraft have been designed to meet all of the NASA human rating standards. Um, and uh, unfortunately, the ASAP uh, team simply did no due diligence. Um, they did not do their research, and if they had, they would, they would realize that, in fact, we meet all of the human rating standards um, that, that NASA has, has published. What about this uh, notion that uh, going with your rocket, your system, doesn't do anything to close this gap between the shuttle and whatever is next? Um, well, I think that that's, that's obviously uh, untrue because our Falcon 9 vehicle is done with development. Um, our Dragon spacecraft is almost done with development. In fact, the first Falcon 9 will be uh, 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 fully assembled at Cape Canaveral uh, next month, uh, and our Dragon spacecraft will be ready to fly this summer. In contrast, uh, Ares Orion is, not, uh, is estimated to be ready to fly in 2017. So, um, obviously, there's there's something very wrong with that 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 picture. Uh, if, if people are saying, or if the ASAP is, is saying that this this that that we won't close the gap, but obviously we will. Um, we we do have to develop an escape system. That's really the only thing that's missing, and that is a, a two to three year development. All right, let's uh, go to another passage here, which gets into another area. It says this: switching from a demonstrated, well-designed, safety optimized system, referring to Ares. Uh, <laughs> to one based on nothing more than unsubstantiated claims would seem to be a poor choice. Now, you, you scoffed at that. You, you, don't even, you, you reject that uh, assumption that uh, Ares is, is uh, demonstrated, well-designed, and safety-optimized? Well, it's, it's, it's obviously false in the face of it because uh, the Ares design is not even complete. So if, if one were to say that, you know, um, it, it, it wouldn't even be accurate to say that, that Ares is a paper rocket because the paper is not even complete. Um, so it, it is difficult to say that one, that, I mean, it's impossible. It, it, it is obviously false to say that, that Ares is, is, is designed for safety and is a safe rocket if the design is not even complete. Um, whereas uh, in our case, the, the design is, is complete um, and it meets all of the structural safety standards, the redundancy and all the things that are necessary 
uh, for uh, NASA human rating. I spoke with Mike Griffin, the former NASA administrator who helped shepherd Aries and Constellation through the process uh, before he left NASA uh, back in December, and he said this. I'm way more than a bit skeptical, Miles. I want to see them succeed repeatedly in transporting cargo before they are entrusted with crew. Is that a legitimate statement? Well, um, that, that'll actually happen anyway because we'll begin doing our, our cargo demonstrations uh, this year, and by the time we're ready to launch crew in, in two to three years, there will already be several flights of, uh, to the space station of our Falcon 9 a rocket and, and Dragon spacecraft. Uh, so that, that, that's going to happen anyway, so I think that concern can be, can be put aside. In contrast, uh, uh, with Ares Orion, uh, that, that same standard is not being adhered to. Uh, it's expected to fly crew from day one uh, instead of having uh, several cargo demonstrations ahead of that to prove reliability. Another passage I want to bring out to you, and you touched on this a little bit, the, the issue of a crew escape system. Talks, first of all, it says this, that the demonstrated high reliability of the solid rocket booster suggests a low likelihood of first stage failure on ascent, but the launch escape system would cover even this low probability of failure. You haven't developed your launch escape system. You say it's going to take two to three years. Won't that delay the program further? Well, first of all, the, the Ares Ryan system is only expected to be ready in 2017 again. So, so even our two to three years would still put us many years ahead of Ares Ryan. Uh, going to your, to your first two points, the solid rocket boosters, I think, are, are, are really quite dangerous. Uh, the, the first shuttle tragedy, which killed seven astronauts, was due to a solid rocket booster. Um, and the Air Force did a study uh, which showed that the escape system would not be able to get away from an explosion of the solid rocket booster rendering moot at the point of, of, of escaping. Um, in contrast, ours is an all-liquid system, just as Apollo was, uh, and Apollo uh, would, had, had no flight failures, um, and if they had, they would have been able to escape. Uh, um, and just as jets uh, and cars and, and boats are, are liquid-fueled, I think the same logic applies to, uh, to, to, to rockets. Finally, is, is the establishment out to get you? I think that there's there's a, a strong uh, reaction, a, a broad-based reaction among among the establishment to to prevent uh, essentially a new era of, of 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 space travel from from happening, and 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 that that bias is strongly reflected in the ASAP report, um, uh, which you know and my, my my challenge to the ASAP report, uh, which is not based on on any uh, level of due diligence is if they say that our rocket is less safe and does not meet uh, human rating requirements, but Aries Ryan does, I challenge them to name which requirements. They will not be able to do so. Elon Musk, thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Thank you. Musk is aiming to launch Falcon 9 for the first time on a test flight from the Cape between March and May. Up next on This Week in Space, the fourth man on the moon was the first and only artist to leave footprints there. An out-of-this-world art exhibit, and we'll take a tour with Alan Bean.